Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark Cards bring you Joan Fontaine in Miracle on the Blotter on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark brings you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories and presents as your host one of the most distinguished actors of the American theater, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Lionel Barrymore. I'm sure that every one of us likes to be surprised. <laughs> that is, if it's the right kind of a surprise, a pleasant one. Well, that's just what I think we have for you tonight on Hallmark Playhouse. It's a rather remarkable story called A Miracle on the Blotter by Mildred Cram. It's a story about a very special young woman who, uh, oh, yeah, I almost forgot. I, I promised it would be a surprise, didn't I? Well, but since I, uh, I did say it's about a very special young woman, I can add that to play the part, we're delighted to have that very special and lovely actress, Joan Fontaine. And now here's Frank Goss from the makers of Hallmark Cars. When you're choosing the Christmas card you want to represent you and all your friends' homes, isn't it nice to know that good taste costs no more? Yes, you can select a Hallmark card, one that perfectly reflects your good taste and still pay no more. Most important of all, though, is the comfortable knowledge that when you send a Hallmark card, you are also complimenting the good taste of your friends. For to everyone everywhere, that Hallmark on the back of your Christmas card means you cared enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor picture Plymouth Adventure, starring Spencer Tracy, Gene Tierney, Van Johnson, and Leo Genn. And now, here is the first act of Miracle on the Blotter, starring Joan Fontaine. Snowflakes swirl around the towers and spires of Manhattan. In the streets below, the homeward millions push past store windows bright with Christmas decorations. On Upper Fifth Avenue, the crowds and music melt away. Here are the fashionable 60s, with the apartments of the well-to-do and the penthouses of the very rich. Here, 30 floors above the street, is the penthouse of one of the world's richest young women. Here tonight, Nora Haywood dresses for the opera. Catherine! Catherine! Yes, Miss Haywood? I'm still waiting for my jewels. Or do I have to go to the vault and get them myself? I'm sorry, ma'am. Ralph is the only one who knows the combination. And he's gone out for a moment. Gone out? Perhaps it's time that I hired a new bodyguard. Well, the minute he gets back, bring me my jewels. Yes, ma'am. And I'll need my sable wrap. Very well, ma'am. Come in. Uh, Edmund, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Martin is here. Oh, dear, and I still haven't got my jewels. And without her jewels, a woman is practically unclothed. <laughs> How are you, Nora? Oh, I'm all right, I suppose. Darling. I believe we did have a date for this afternoon. Did we? We did. It's customary, you know, for the bride and groom to go over the guest list for their wedding. Oh, I'm sorry. The meeting of the board of directors lasted all day. Oh, well, then you're forgiven. But after we're married, promise? What? That you'll forget all about the directors' meetings. The steel companies and the railroads don't really need Neil Martin. 
but I do, desperately. Nora. No conditions, please. But now, let's get back to the wedding. Here's the guest list. Uh, excuse me just a minute, will you, Nora? Well, you can at least read it, dear. There are the Abbots, the Andersons, the Babcocks, the Baldwins, perhaps. They're friends of yours, aren't they? Uh, hello. May I speak to Father Riley, please? Oh, I see. Then, when he gets back, will you tell him that Mr. Neil Martin called? If he can come over to see me, I'll be at Miss Nora Hayward's penthouse. Neil! Yes, that's right. Thank you. Well, Neil will be at dinner. I know. Well, we're dining here, aren't we? Oh, yes, but let's not have anybody bothering us. Who is this Father Roddy? Oh, he's a wonderful old man. His church runs a welfare mission. Every year I stop by and leave him a Christmas check, but today I just didn't have time. Well, you can see him tomorrow. I want to tonight, Nora. Oh, but darling... I want him to come here so he can get your contribution, too. Well, what makes you so certain that I want to give him anything? Nora, it never occurred to me there would be any doubt. Miss Hayward? Yes? The cook says there's been an accident in her family. She wants to know if she might go to the hospital. Her brother's been hurt. She may go as soon as dinner is over. Oh, Nora, let her go now. We can dine out. Oh, that's ridiculous, Neil. I'm tired of being followed around by Ralph. Your bodyguard? The rules of the insurance company, dear. I'm wearing the Raja diamond tonight, so my bodyguard has to go with me, even to the opera. Catherine, you may tell the cook that we expect dinner in uh, five minutes. Yes, Miss Hayward. Oh, I'm sorry, Neil. Now, let's try to run through this guest list before there's another interruption. The Abbots, the Andersons, Nora. the Babcocks, Baldwin. Nora. Oh, well, please, dear. Are you going to help Father Roddy or not? Oh, darling, my attorney takes care of my contributions to charity. I see. Yes, very clearly. Neil, you, you, you're so strange this evening. What's wrong? What's the matter? I've been asking myself that for the past few weeks. Now I know. It's you, Nora. You see, I'm in love with you. But I'm not going to marry you. Neil. Everything I've seen tonight that I've been seeing for the past month adds up to one thing. You haven't a thought for anyone in this world besides yourself. Do you have even the faintest idea what the world is like and the human beings in it? Well, but why should you care about them? You live in the clouds in your penthouse 30 floors up in the air with your sables and your Rajah diamonds and your bodyguards. Well, they're all yours, Nora. I can't take it. Neil, wait, I... I didn't mean to be hasty. It's too late, Nora. There's nothing to say now except... Goodbye. Darling, listen to me. Neil, I, I love you. I need you. I, I, I can't go on without you. Oh, Neil. <laughs> Miss Hayward? Miss Hayward? Yes. If you don't mind, ma'am, the cook would like to know how much longer she should hold dinner. Oh, tell her she can go now. I'm, I'm not hungry. Very well, ma'am. And, Catherine, you may take my jewels back to the vault. The case is here on the table. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me, Miss Hayward. Yes? Is it really true that the Rajah Diamond is bad luck? I see you read the Sunday supplements. They say it's caused all sorts of tragedies. That men have died for it. I suppose so. There are always men who will kill for something worth a half a million dollars. Yes. Catherine, take the diamond out of the case. Yes, ma'am. Fasten it round my neck. Yes, ma'am. And now, my sables, quickly. Oh, who is it? Uh, Miss Hayward, uh, there's a gentleman, a Father Roddy. Tell him that Mr. Martin has left, Edmund. I did, ma'am, but he said he'd like to talk to you. All right, I'll see him on my way out. Your wrap, ma'am. Thank you. Father Roddy. Yes, Miss Hayward? Mr. Martin told me about your welfare mission. I presume that you'd like a contribution from me. Well, Mr. Martin said that yes, you... Yes, I know. I'm sorry, Father. My attorney and business manager attend to all these matters. They give what they think I can afford to the accredited charities. I understand. Good. And if you'll excuse me, my elevator is waiting. May I ride down with you? If you wish. Uh, Miss Hayward, Miss Hayward. Yes, what is it, Edmund? I'm afraid you'll have to wait, ma'am. We didn't know you were going out. The chauffeur hasn't brought the car around, and Ralph has gone home. 
That's all right, Edmund. I'm taking a taxi, and I won't need a bodyguard. Miss Hayward, but you're wearing the diamond. That's very observant of you, Edmund. Goodbye. Miss Hayward? Yes? Perhaps sometime you might be able to stop by our mission. I'd like to show it to you. Why? So that you can parade all your poor in front of me? So that you can work on my sympathies? I didn't say that. If you were in my position, Father, I think you'd be as tired of the poor as I am. All I have to do is walk into a room and every face grows hard and calculating. It could be that you know the wrong people. The men and women who are my friends. Ah, do you see this diamond? Suppose I showed it to these friends of yours. Suppose I walked through your slums tonight and they saw it. What do you think would happen to me? Nothing. If you have the faith of God. No, why should I have faith? There isn't a human being in the city who wouldn't murder me for this diamond. All they want is the chance. I think I understand now. Perhaps you mean to give them that chance. Is that it? Yes. That's it exactly. Don't, my child. It will prove nothing. You see, you don't really have faith either. I have. But the faith I'm talking about comes through prayer. Then pray for me tonight, Father. I shall. Good. And I'll make a bargain with you. If after tonight I come back here safe and unharmed, I'll give that mission of yours $5,000. Miss Haywood. Wish us both luck, Father. Taxi. Taxi. Where to, lady? The Bowery. Huh? Yes, you heard me correctly. I said the Bowery. a moment, we will return to the second act of Miracle on the Blotter, starring Joan Fontaine. Here in America, Christmas Day is a holy day for most of us, a day when we turn to the church of our choice to express our deep-rooted faith in God. And many of us like to acknowledge the true significance of the season in other ways, too, by joining a group of carolers, by giving to the poor, and by sending religious Christmas cards to those we love. In fact, the makers of Hallmark cards find that each year more and more people are choosing religious cards to represent their family during the Yuletide season. That's why you'll find the selection that is appealing and complete wherever Hallmark cards are sold. There are scenes of the Nativity, cards that depict the Madonna or Christ Child, or the wise men following the Star of Bethlehem, and many others by famous Hallmark artists. Yes, whatever your taste in religious cards, there's sure to be a Hallmark Christmas card to suit your needs. And remember, through the cards you mail this month, you can send the beauty and joy and blessed message of Christmas time right next door or half a world away. Now back to Lionel Barrymore in the second act of Miracle on the Blotter, starring Joan Fontaine. <laughs> One of the richest women in the world has decided that her life isn't worth a living. But now this decision is to affect many others besides Nora Hayward. In her penthouse, Nora's butler telephones to her attorney. But she refused to take her bodyguard, sir. She simply walked out of here with a Roger diamond round her neck, got into a taxi and disappeared. Yes, sir, I think you should inform the police. In another part of the city, in a humble welfare mission, Father Roddy kneels and raises his eyes toward the cross of his faith. Lead her into paths of safety and deliver thy other children from temptation. At that moment, Nora Haywood's taxi turns into a dimly lit street and pulls over to the curb.
I'm warning you for the last time, lady. This isn't your kind of neighborhood. Want me to follow you? I do not. Good night. Well, if you're looking for trouble, walking around here is a good way to find it. Miss. Hey, miss. Are you talking to me? Give me a quarter, lady. Well, I'll see if I have one. Uh, here you are. I said a quarter. I don't need a whole dollar. Look at it again. It's a hundred dollars. Hey, lady. You nuts. Perhaps. But I don't need it. I've got a lot more in my purse. Here. See? Yeah, I see. Well? Here, lady, take it back. I can't spend it. They'll just call the cops and say I stole it. All I wanted was a quarter so I could eat. Hmm. Then I'll, I'll buy you a meal. Is there some place near? <laughs> there is. Hey, come on. Thanks, lady, for the dinner. I enjoyed it. I liked it, too. Good night. Good night. Taxi, lady? Oh, I... I thought I told you not to wait. Uh-huh. You did. Get in. Where to now? Uh, I don't know. Just any place. Have you any suggestions? Uh-huh. I've got you figured right, lady. You can save a lot of time by just heading for the East River. Maybe you're right. I thought about doing that once. You did? Why should you? Oh, I was fresh out of the Army. Saved up a couple thousand bucks, and you're just what I wanted out of life. Ranch out west. Wyoming, that's where I come from. It's a little place, you know, with some horses and a few cattle. Why didn't you go ahead with it? I figured I needed a couple thousand more, so I got in a crap game. Yes, after that, I went and looked into the river. Now, here I am, still a hacky, still fighting 10,000 other guys for a fare, still bucking the traffic and yelling at the cops, and still needing that couple of thousand. Just a little place with some horses and cattle. Probably doesn't sound like much to you, but uh, for me, that'd really be it. Look, lady, you, you don't really want the river, do you? You ask me, I don't think you got the nerve. No, I'm afraid I haven't. Turn around and drop me at the first bright spot you see. expected honesty in a place like this. Yeah? Just what did you expect? Hey, that sure is a hunk of glass you're wearing, sister. Lights up almost like the real thing. It is real. Yeah. Hey, boy, she says this is real ice. Well, it is. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of the Raja Diamond? Uh, maybe she ain't kidding. Uh, this coat of hers don't look like rabbit. I should hope not. It's sable. Sister, I think you better go home. Why? Well, if you don't know, you're dumber than I think you are. Come on, I'll take you outside and get your cab. I never figured to see you come out of that place. At least not alive and still wearing that rock. Boy, did the newspapers ever lie when they said the Rajah Diamond was a hoodoo. The Rajah? How did you know? Remember the first time I dropped you? Right after that, I picked up a police broadcast on my radio here. Every cop in town's looking for you. Well, then you've known who I am all along. Why didn't you do something about it? Oh, curiosity, I guess. Wanted to see how long your luck would hold. 
you finally used it all up. Nora. Get out. No. Not not you. I've been thinking about it all evening. Not that diamond. That's too hot. But the dough in your purse that'd buy two ranches in Wyoming. I can't believe it. You of all the people I've met tonight. Yeah, well, uh, might as well be me as somebody else. Just a little place in Wyoming with some horses and cattle. Will you shut up? Just when I thought I was wrong about life, you... You proved that I was right after all. Well, what can you know about life? You've never been broke. There it is. Money. That's why everybody hates me. That's all they've ever wanted of me. My money. Go ahead. Take it. I can't. Come on, get back in the cab. You're going home. Here you are, driver. Keep the change. Oh, uh, just a minute, Miss Hayward. The fare's 30 bucks, not 3,000. I said keep the change for, for Wyoming and just a little place with some horses and cattle. Good night. Hayward. Good morning, Edmund. We never expected to see you again, ma'am. Everybody's been here all night just waiting for the news. Everybody? Well, Mr. Martin and your attorney, Father Roddy, the newspaper men, and the chief of police. I'll tell them you're here. No, I'll do it, Edmund. Good morning, everybody. Nora. Miss Hayward. Oh, Nora, thank heavens you're all right. Oh, Neil, it's so good to see you. Well, Miss Hayward, this is certainly a relief. I've had my entire department alerted all night. Every officer in squad car has been combing the city for you. Well, I'm flattered that the police department thinks so highly of me, but really there was nothing to worry about. I had a most wonderful time. I wore the Raja diamond everywhere, and, and look, I'm, I'm safe and sound. The others may have been worried, my child, but I was not. Father Roddy. It seems I was the last person to talk to you, and so the police called me. Oh, I'm so glad you're here, Father. Uh, Edmund. Edmund, will you bring me my checkbook and a pen? Uh, yes, Miss Hayward. Father Roddy, I promised you $5,000 if nothing happened to me tonight. I lost that wager. But I gained something infinitely more. Uh, your checkbook, Miss Hayward. Thank you. Um, no... That's not enough, Father Roddy. Yes, my child? I've given checks like this all my life, but I've never given of myself. Here, Father, here's your check. But I want to do something more, something that can't be bought with money. I want to come down to your mission and help you. You'll always be welcome. Miss Hayward? Yes, Chief? I'm forgetting along now, but there's one thing that I, I must ask of you. Never, Miss Hayward, never repeat such a risk again. On any other night, you wouldn't have been so lucky. But why? If I could do it last night, why not all the time? Last night was something that none of us understands, Miss Hayward. You see, for the first time on record, not a single crime was committed in the city of New York. No crime of any sort. The blotters are blank. It wasn't luck. Father Roddy and I know it was much more than that. And I'll thank you, all of you, for your concern about me. I Good night, you, Miss. You've changed, Nora. Oh, quite a lot, I hope. Oh, Neil, I have so much to make up for. We could make it up together, Nora. Or is it too late? Oh, no, my dear, no. This is our beginning. Last night was the end of the old Nora and the beginning of the new. The new Nora who loves you deeper and better and more simply. I found out at last, my darling, that every woman is the richest woman in the world when she has love.
Chain and Lionel Barrymore will return in a moment. Of all the cards you receive at Christmas, which are the ones you cherish most? Aren't they the cards that have a special intimacy and warmth about them? The cards that seem to say, this is how I feel about Christmas. This is the memory I want to share with you. Well, tonight I suggest that you see the Hallmark Christmas cards in boxes at your favorite store. You'll find they include every type of Christmas greeting imaginable and the one type in particular that seems to express you best. You can choose cards by brilliant artists like Grandma Moses, Winston Churchill, or Norman Rockwell, prints by Courier and Ives, or charming traditional cards bedecked with holly or candles or shining trees. Yes, and there are sophisticated styles, too, and Hallmark cards with formal red or green or gold lettering. And yet Hallmark cards and boxes are so reasonable, they'll let your Christmas card allowance stretch and stretch. You can find boxes for as little as $1 and some at just 59 cents. So why not get yours tomorrow? Just look for the hallmark on the box. The famous symbol that means you care enough to send the very best. Here again is Lionel Barrymore. Joan, it's good to have you with us again. As always, you gave a delightful performance. One I know all our hallmark playhouse listeners enjoyed as much as I did. But say... When you were here last, you didn't tell us there was a wedding in your plans. Now, is that any way to treat a friend? <laughs> well, we decided to keep it very quiet, Mr. Barrymore. And after all, when I'm talking to you here, it's not exactly a secret. No, 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 no. I know, I know, I know, I know. Well, all our very best wishes to you, Joan. He's a mighty lucky fellow. <laughs> yeah, a mighty lucky fellow. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Barrymore. And you'll be interested to know that... Many of the good wishes we received from our friends came to us on Hallmark cards. Oh. I noticed that particularly and deeply appreciated it. Well, I'm glad of that, Joe. I really am. And we all feel that Hallmark cards contribute to the happy moments in life, and it, it's good to hear you say so. And we'll be looking forward to your Christmas program week after next on Hallmark Playhouse with your wonderful portrayal of Scrooge and Dickens' Christmas Carol. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to it myself, Joan. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we've got one more Sunday before that. Oh, I know. And what are your plans for next week? Well, it'll be full of the holiday spirit, too. It's a wonderfully warm story called Home for Christmas, and it was written by one of America's best-known authors, Lloyd C. Douglas. I, I, I hope you'll hear that, too. That we will, Mr. Barrymore. Good night. Good night, Joan. Good night. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Sunday. Our producer-director is William Gay. Our music is composed and conducted by David Rose. And our story tonight was adapted by Leonard St. Clair. Until next Sunday, then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Joan Fontaine can currently be seen with Robert Taylor and Elizabeth Taylor in the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Technicolor production of Ivanhoe. The role of Neil was played by Whitfield Connor with Norman Field as Father Roddy, Virginia Gregg as Catherine, and Lamont Johnson as the cab driver. Others in our cast included Peter Leeds as the panhandler, Eric Snowden as Edmund, Victor Rodman as the police chief, and John Larch as the man. During this Christmas season, Hallmark Cards will present two special programs for the whole family's enjoyment. On Sunday, December 21st, hear Lionel Barrymore in his beloved portrayal of Scrooge in Dickens' Christmas Carol on the Hallmark Playhouse. And on Christmas Day, Hallmark Cards will again televise John Carlo Menotti's opera Amal and the Night Visitors on Hallmark Hall of Fame. 6 to 7 Eastern Standard Time. Consult your paper for local time and channel. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when Hallmark Playhouse returns to present Anne Blythe in Lloyd C. Douglas's Home for Christmas and the week following Lionel Barrymore in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol and the week after that Catherine Marshall's A Man Called Peter on the Hallmark Playhouse. This is the CBS Radio Network.